Hi, this is your host, Omni Bhartia, and welcome to our next edition here at KubeCon EU in Valencia. And today we have with us once again, Yulian Fisher, CEO and founder at AnyNice. Yulian, it's great to have you in person. Great to be here and great to see you again after uh, that many years. It's been so long. First of all, you uh, rode on your bike here. So first of all, talk about that experience. Also, if I'm not wrong, you recorded something for the data on Kubernetes community as well uh, while you were riding your bikes. I was actually giving the talk here in Valencia in, the, in their recording uh, in a hotel nearby. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, riding a, a motorcycle to conference has a bit of history. I did that back in 2011, um, going from Saarbrücken to Spain as well, uh, Barcelona, which would be um, Conferencia Rails, I think, was the conference. It was, you know, a wonderful experience, and I wanted to connect to that uh, experience. One of my teammates, you know, a, a younger fellow, he also wanted to do a motorcycle trip, and I said, well, let's combine this. And we took the motorcycles and went uh, a little deviation through the Pyrenees, and then um, heading towards Valencia it was nice. And three days, much fun. Excellent. So I think you had more fun than a lot of folks who were actually <laughs> here at the conference. Um, uh, you are here at the conference. Uh, uh, what kind of vibe, what kind of energy you are seeing here? Because, you know, first of all, we are trying to get out of COVID. Community adoption is growing. So the community is also uh, larger, but a bit different also. So just, just share your experience. Well, first of all, I'm very glad that the venue is so big. And I never had the feeling that people are getting too close or anything. Um, I have, you know, many good conversations, you know, walking into people again is, is just awesome. It's, um, I've been missing that. So I think uh, some people might still be a bit uncomfortable, but um, I think that we are slowly getting there. And it, is, uh, it has been a good experience to you know, just see other people again. Right. Uh, now let's talk about, uh, I mean, we have talked about company all the time, but let's just talk about any night itself. How have you folks evolved over time? Any specific problem that you are seeing that you're still trying to solve because you're like, hey, this is still an unsolved problem. Yeah, first of all, uh, the cloud foundry business is going on. We've uh, helping clients to uh, migrate to uh, open source based cloud foundry, including our data service automation. Um, that that's continued at uh, full throttle, uh, works like charm. Uh, in the Kubernetes era, in the Kubernetes section, we've um, onboarded clients where there's some interesting constraints. So in particular, one client, um, he, he has connections to customers in the banking industry. And um, after recent events in uh, in Germany uh, regarding Wirecard, for example. Um, the Control Institute, uh, BaFin, is, is pretty strict and uh, observing uh, those companies very tightly. So they basically asked us, can we find a hosting provider in Europe, uh, preferably even German, that will go with them the long way of going through all the additional security um, requirements uh, they, they have with their banking customers. And, um, you know, with the any Nines platform being modular and infrastructure agnostic, it was a challenge for us because the major U.S. providers have been ruled out by the customer's customers um, very strictly. And, um, you know, it felt like connecting to our original story uh, where any Nines started with being a public pass provider um, on European infrastructure. And, you know, to just be, repeat a little bit of history, uh, we had tremendous problems with OpenStack at that time. And we've been re-evaluating European OpenStack providers, and we can see that these problems actually continue. So that leads to the, you know, let's lead to our conclusion that a Kubernetes with, uh, you know, there are Kubernetes products in the hosting sector, they distributed, um, you know, automation there. It's not perfect, but you can get a managed or uh, at least a Kubernetes cluster also on those smaller providers. So it means that uh, the hypothesis has been strengthened that Kubernetes also cannibalizes part of that ex OpenStack territory and becomes an infrastructure abstraction. Well, you lose a bit of the automation power if, if, if those APIs aren't standardized on how to control the lifecycle of their Kubernetes. 
but at least you get you know that infrastructure abstraction you can schedule your parts and in this particular case it also becomes very important that uh, data on kubernetes is a managed uh, you know something that you as an organization managed and as we have operators um, you know for postgres for example and there are new upcoming uh, for uh, for other data services as well you have a self-contained Kubernetes deployment in this case, and all you need is a Kubernetes somewhere. So there, the AnyNance platform adapt, adopted to that particular constraint, and so far it works well, and it's a good showcase on how a pure Kubernetes uh, workload, including uh, data service operators, uh, and how, how this is an important thing. Any specific challenge, you know, when you talk about uh, uh regulations which has to, you mentioned it has to be European and preferably German uh, what are the challenges that are there when companies do face because open stack in the early days you know uh, uh, t-mobile they had their own cloud other you know actually open stack become quite popular in Europe because of the whole of uh, the whole hyperscaler market was US based earlier but uh, how much problem they have solved and what problem that you are seeing that are still there where you know it's not a hey you flip the button move to open stack move to kubernetes and all your problems are solved well i think the problems we've seen is is um, is twofold maybe threefold the first layer is your automation layer so if you use a tool that talks to infrastructure in our case for example gardener a kubernetes on demand uh, a module that we um, that we use, um, you know, the, there are maybe some assumptions about the underlying OpenStack in there, and that may not, you know, be in conjunction with the particular OpenStack you're talking to. The next level is OpenStack itself. So OpenStack itself is is a problem for many companies just to operate OpenStack, not doing anything wrong. So it's just that some things in OpenStack. Are problematic, and the, the the third layer would be whoever operates OpenStack needs to know OpenStack very well. It you know the 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 hardware must be organized in a very particular way and integrated with with their with their networking. You know that must be done perfectly. What we experience is is problems like you know you use an API call and say give me a router, and you don't get a router. Or give me a load balancer, but you don't get a load balancer. So basic things like that, they fail. Sometimes these uh, OpenStack-based services are marked as as beta, so that they are working on it. But it's um, it's interesting. You can go to China and you know get an Amazon-like experience, you know at least for basic compute and so on on AliCloud, for example. But where where is that replacement here in Europe? We are still looking for it. So Kubernetes is a good guess as an infrastructure abstraction. Um, and I think that's that's um, an interesting takeaway that that I've been, you know, I've been publicly stating this hypothesis for many years and it it, it seems to it seems to be um, holding to this day. Anything else that you are seeing is specific to, uh, I mean, we hear a lot about, you know, of course, uh, you focus on, you know, data services, but uh, we hear a lot about security these days. We talk about high availability also, you know, what are you seeing in that space, especially from any nice perspective? Well, first of all, it really depends on how you're using Kubernetes. Um, let's say small and medium enterprises, let's say this on, at the smaller range, you know, they often have only a few Kubernetes clusters. And I think you have a tremendous amount of components you can use to you know, get your cluster secure, to do networking, to do storage and service meshes and all that. And I think there the ecosystem is very, very strong. If you look at larger organizations where there are a lot of Kubernetes clusters and you need to make sense of you know, a lot of them, there's a big demand for, for example, lifecycle managing them. Um, because if you think about 100 Kubernetes clusters and they have all different operators and different extensions and so on, how do you make sense of that? Um, on the data of Kubernetes, uh, data on Kubernetes community, I gave a small talk, for example, about how, how hard it is to do lifecycle management for operators. So, you know, there's Helm, there's OLM, there's maybe something like Kabel from the VMs or Tanzu platform. 
But none of these technologies allow you to lifecycle manage you know, all these components in, in an effortless way. So if you are an organization and you run into you know, the situation where you have dozens or you know, trending into the hundreds of Kubernetes clusters, that'll create a lot of operational friction. It's also something that I've predicted like, for, for, for years. And um, I'm, I'm really interested to see that more technologies um, will, will conquer that space. Julian, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk you know, to us. And the best thing, as you also said in the beginning, was to be able to see each other in person because the, the, the experience that you get when you talk to somebody in person is totally different than doing remote interviews. So uh, that is also there. And I hope that this will become a norm now where we'll see each other often and do shows like this to talk more about this topic. So thank Absolutely. you. And thank you for you know having me here. It's always a pleasure.